Okay, so to follow on to the firebox, um, so I'm the camera down now, around now, I can see you've got the sticks at the bottom of the ash pan, there. Let's move it in position now and again. Okay. Now once those that's burnt off and produces the ember, it will still keep the heat at the bottom of the firebox. Okay. So if we look inside, I don't want to move my camera too close because it is really hot. You can see the embers that I'm getting at the bottom of the firebox. So there is no waste in fuel. So what I've done is I've put a log that is probably what four, inch t four inches taller than the firebox. And I've just put it right smack bang in the middle of the embers. And I'm going to see how long that's going to burn for and how hot, how much heat is generating um, from the firebox. Um, if you want to use it as a primary heat source. Um, so, it's just an experiment for today. Um, basically, it's an experiment to keep them embers burning at the bottom of the firebox. Okay. Yeah, let's have a look. Now, I don't know if this log is probably... Um, it seems dry, but I don't know if how wet it is in the middle of the log. It seems to be burning at the bottom, as you can probably see, without burning my phone. So we've got a nice slow burn at the bottom. Nothing on this side as of yet. But we'll see how it goes. Um, and we'll see what kind of embers that we can build from that. Um, and see what time it is um, till it burns. So I'll, I'll, uh, what I'll do, I'll keep uploading short videos on the progress uh, and get my head around this firebox um, ember problem that nobody appears to have uh, mentioned before. Um, now the firebox um, can be used as a primary heat source. So for all intents and purposes, if it is designed um, as a primary heat source as well as cooking your food obviously, um, then it should be able to take the heat um, that I'm subjecting it to especially the ash pan down at, at the very bottom obviously because it's if you see my previous video yesterday I did that was the main problem is that the holes um, in the, the base plate here which is just below that um, that wood feed there has large holes about that big, and the what happened was it burnt. It was burning the wood at a very accelerated rate, and the embers formed from the wood was falling through the large gaps in the base plate. Um, Again, I don't know why they made holes that big, um, but it stops the firebox from producing that hot ember um, that is used, obviously, to relight your fire, um, cook your food on, uh, cook your steak on, or etc. And so, you was never, I was never going to get lots of embers and hot embers. That's going to last, which is if you're using it as a primary heat source as well as cooking, then you need some you need hot embers constantly there, um, so that the fire can easily be relit um, every time you put uh, chuck your wood on it. And I just wasn't getting that with a firebox because, um, like I said yesterday in the video, um, if you leave this firebox unattended, um, look, I'm not me walk walk off away in the wood for now and leave it i meant um still um say say like i am now talking on the video and you're leaving the firebox unattended um and you forget about it you forget to put the wood on it uh, within probably five minutes sometimes even less than that i've come back to the firebox and it has gone out because there is no embers at the bottom um 
that's sustaining the wood that I'm putting in there. So I'm feeding it, feeding it, feeding it, feeding it. Uh, I know a lot of people are thinking now, well, why don't you just get slow burning wood? Um, you know, like oak that burns a lot um, hotter. Um, or pine. I mean, pine's not really a slow burner in my opinion. Yes, you can get a, a red hot fire using natural pine because of the um, the resin content in the, in the, in the wood. But pine actually, to me, in my experience, it actually burns it quite quickly. Um, so if you go with the much, um, say, um, harder woods like uh, maybe ash and oak, um, they tend to burn for quite a long time. But pine, yeah, it, it burns through pine quite quickly unless you put really, really thick logs on it. Um, but I still wasn't getting that ember on my firebox. Um, and like I say, I've looked on YouTube, but I've never really come across anybody else mentioning that. Um, they all say what um, a good thing the firebox is and how easy it is to use. And it is easy to use, very easy to use. But those holes at the bottom um, of the base plate, you know, that comes down um, when the whole thing unfolds. Um, I really don't know why they put holes in that big. Because you're never going to get them sustainable embers that you really need to keep the fire going um, or cooking. I mean, you know, like I say, if you don't keep feeding the wood through this fire and you're cooking a nice juicy steak, and then within a minute or two, the the embers have completely gone out um, and turned to ash, and then the ashes then obviously dropped on the the ash plate underneath and it's completely gone out. So you need them embers there. Uh, to cook your food to relight your fire so all you have to do is just throw a few sticks in now and again and it relights but if there's no embers there in the first place you're never going to get that never and if it completely goes out you, you're pretty much knackered because you've got to start all over again and um what i mean is just start from all over again i mean you do have to start all over again i mean you need to start from the beginning with your tinder in your your kindling like you did um when you first used it and uh, you know i don't know about you but you know at 12 o'clock at night or whatever i don't want to be real trying to relight a fire in the dark um um obviously i can do because i've done it many times but i don't want to be faffing about um if it's cold wet or or whatever you know i want the embers to be there constantly without um uh i should say um where it isn't possible to have an open fire, but maybe because it's you're in um, a permission wood, um, but they say you're not allowed a wildfire, uh, open fire, um, but you are allowed obviously um, a firebox stove. Okay, um, but yeah, that's the number one problem. It is a cracking stove. Don't get me wrong, it is superb. The, the thick steel, the gauge steel that they use is is really, really, really spot on. Um, yes, the firebox can warp over time, um, like most um, stoves do. Um, I've never known a stove that doesn't warp over time, but um, that's easy remedied. Can't speak right today. Um, and the warp is not that bad. Unless you f put the fire out by force, by tipping a load of water on the firebox, which is which I don't recommend, um, then the warping that happens with a firebox or even a bush box is very, very minimal, very minimal. Um, I've not really experienced a problem with this and I've uh, had this for a few years now. I've never really had that problem with it. Um, but if you leave your firebox still burning, red hot, and it does happen to rain and you've not got the firebox on the shelter, and it rains on your firebox yes it's going to cool the um, steel down very rapidly and everybody knows probably from a scientific point of view what happens to um, very hot metal that cools down very very rapidly um, it will cause it to bend and warp um, and possibly the hinges warping as well so you'll be able to fall down the uh, the firebox or the bush box or whatever um, kind of um, steel you've got um, stove you've got sorry so yeah, it's just a quick update, um, just experiment with the firebox, which I've not really done for um, for a while really, and see what uh, I can do to keep the members burning. Okay, so uh, another really quick video for you. Um, thanks for watching, hopefully it gives you some ideas. Take care.